Good morning, everybody. We're so glad that you chose to join us in worship this morning. I just want to start out um, the service with the reading of Scripture. We're going to come out of Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. It says, Without faith, it's impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to Him must believe that He exists and that He rewards those who earnestly seek Him. What I want to encourage you with this morning is that the Lord rewards you when you earnestly seek Him. And that reward is more of Him. It's more of His presence. It's experiencing Him in a greater measure. So this morning, what I'm praying for, what I'm believing for you is that as you're watching today, when you seek the Lord, when you go after Him with everything that you have, He's going to reward you by showing you Himself more openly. I believe that you're going to know Jesus better than you ever have before at the end of this service when you give your full heart and your full attention to it. So I'd just like to pray for you and then we'll dive into worship. So Lord Jesus, we love you so much. We're so thankful that your word is always true, that you're a rewarder of those who seek you. And so right now we take this time to seek you. We set our time aside. We set our lives aside. We set everything that we're doing aside so that we can seek you and give you our whole hearts. Lord, we believe that you reward us when we do that. We believe that you show us yourself more openly when we do that. We believe that when we know you better, we know ourselves better. When we know you better, we know our purpose better. We love you and we bless you and we're so excited to meet with you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's worship together.
just to claim its victory. The king of love had given up his life. The darkest day in history. There on a cross they made for sinners. For every curse is blood of torn. With final breath and it was finished. But not the end we could have known. For the earth began to shake and the veil was torn. Was made by the heavens roar. All hail King Jesus. All hail the Lord of heaven and earth. All
God, we just thank you so much. We thank you that you are the king of the world. And so, God, right now, as we lean into who you are, God, I know that you are reigning. I am confident that you are reigning and that you have not gotten off of your throne. So, God, as we sing to you, as we listen to your words, God, I pray that you would just move, move in our lives, move in our living rooms, move in our workplace, God. We love you and we praise you. In Jesus' lovely name, amen. We are so thankful that you're here to join us for worship today. Stay tuned for a GP Kids moment. Hey, GP Kids, we're so excited to be with you today. I have Mr. Ben and Miss Hannah with me. All right, let's go ahead and stand up if you're not already. Today, we're gonna do our core values as quickly as you can. So I'm gonna say the first one and we're gonna go around. So if you wanna say them with me. All right, let's go. Love God. Love people. Have a good attitude. Have fun. <laughs> Great job. Now last week we combined Romans 18 and 19. So let's try that again, okay? All right, let's go. I am convinced that any suffering we endure is less than nothing compared to the magnitude of glory that is about to be unveiled within us. The entire universe is standing on tiptoe, yearning to see the unveiling of God's glorious sons and daughters. Romans 8, 18 and 19. Great job, let's try it one more time. I am convinced that any suffering we endure is less than nothing compared to the magnitude of glory that is about to be unveiled within us. The entire universe is standing on tiptoe, yearning to see the unveiling of God's glorious sons and daughters. Romans 8, 18 and 19. Good job, we'll see you again next time. Good morning, church family. It's so good to be with you today on this Memorial Day weekend. So glad that you've decided to tune in no matter where you're at, if you're at home or if you're on vacation or if you're checking this out later in the week. Thank you so much for staying connected. Hey, before we even dive in, I just wanna honor especially those family members of those who gave their life for our freedom. This is a weekend where we acknowledge freedom and we honor those who gave their lives. And so if you're a family member of someone who died for us, even someone who serves or currently serving, we honor you. We thank you men and women who are currently serving and uh, we love you very much. Can't say thanks enough for that. This week, we're gonna continue with our message series, The Unveiling. Before we do that though, I wanna encourage you to do something with me real quick, if you don't mind. If you'll get out your cell phones real quick, I'll give you a couple of seconds to grab them. Hopefully you got them close by. But we really wanna, we really wanna pastor everyone well in this season, and we wanna know who's still with us, who's still connected. And so if you don't mind filling out a connection card today, we haven't done that in so long, but there's a digital way for you to do that. And so if you will go to your text app and type in the number, this is the number that you're gonna to text to, 484848. It's pretty easy to remember. Just type in 484848 and text this in the message line, text the letters TGP. If you'll just text TGP to 484848 and push send, it should send you a link for a connection card. And really, all we're asking you to do this week, uh, we'd love to have your prayer requests. Any information you want to give us would be great. But if you will just give us your name and your vital information, that would be such a gift. We just want to make sure that everyone is remaining connected. And by taking attendance today, and we're going to do it for the next couple of weeks, that'll help us tremendously. Okay? All right. Get your Bibles out to Romans chapter 8. We're in this series called The Unveiling. I'll read the series scripture verse that we have been focusing on, and then we'll get to today's topic. And today's going to be a lot of fun. Romans chapter 8 verse 18 says, I am convinced that any suffering that we endure 
is less than nothing compared to the magnitude of glory that is about to be unveiled within us. Paul says to the church that the entire universe is standing on tiptoe, yearning, leaning in to see the unveiling, the unveiling, that's where we get the name of the series, the unveiling of God's glorious sons and daughters. So for the last few weeks, we've been talking about how this passage, the Apostle Paul is telling the church that whenever there is suffering, whenever there is hardship, whenever there is a difficulty, it is an opportunity for God to unveil His glory, His goodness, His power, and His mercies through His sons and daughters. With every difficult situation, God wants to make something beautiful out of it. He says there's a world looking right now, especially in this season that we're in, there's a world looking for answers. There's a world looking for God, and God desires to display himself through his church. So for the last few weeks, we've been preparing ourselves to be unveiled. When we are released from our homes, when we're released back to church, when we're released to our jobs, how can we unveil the glory of God to those who need it the most? What would that look like? Well, Scripture tells us the characteristics of an unveiled church and an unveiled Christian. Scripture tells us that prophecy is one of the number one characteristics of an unveiled Christian. The glory of God is seen clearly when people hear what God is saying and then speak those words into situations and over people. We actually spent three weeks talking about how to be a prophetic people. How can I be a person that hears what God is saying and then speak that to an individual or speak that into a situation. Really important. Scripture says number two quality or characteristic of an unveiled Christian, an unveiled church, is healing. And we talked about that last week. How God desires to administer his love and compassion to people through healing. Supernatural healing. So we talked about last week, what does it look like to be a person that walks in healing? Laying on of hands. Very practical. Super simple. And this week, one of the characteristics that God talks about often, and we see this in Jesus, is the characteristic of a church that administers deliverance, a people who administer deliverance. So today, we're going to talk about deliverance. Now, when I say deliverance, you may think of that movie, and I don't want you to think of that movie when I say deliverance. Deliverance is actually something that is spoken about throughout scripture. And it's not weird. It's nothing that you should be afraid of. A matter of fact, it's really normal for a disciple of Jesus to walk in freedom and deliverance, help others get free. So let me show you some verses, okay? Jesus says this in Luke chapter 4. He says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me for he has anointed me to bring the good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim that captives will be released, the blind will see, and the oppressed will be set free, and that the time of the Lord's favor has come. So last week I asked you a question, and I hope you gave me the answer uh, of yes, but the question is this, is Jesus our example? Is Jesus our example? And the answer to that is a clear and resounding yes. Jesus himself says, you are going to do the things that I did. And Jesus says, one of my main ministry focus is to set people free who are oppressed. It is deliverance. And that's his expectation of us as well. There are a lot of people in our world and probably very close to us that are being oppressed by evil spirits. And it's our responsibility to help them get free. So, let's talk about deliverance. Simple definition for deliverance. Deliverance is simply setting a person free from the oppression of a demonic spirit. That's what deliverance is. Now, some of you may be like, whoa, demonic spirits. I don't know about that. Is that something that's normal? Or is it normal for people to be bothered by, tormented by, oppressed by demonic spirits? Are they, are they around us? And the answer to that is yes. Matter of fact, here's another passage of Scripture. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. The Apostle Paul reminds the church that we are in a spiritual world. I know it's physical and our bodies are physical, but he says, hey, most of the things that you deal with are actually spiritual. Look at this. 
In Ephesians chapter 6, he says, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood. It's not against this, the things that you see, but against the rulers, spiritual authorities, powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in an heavenly and unseen realm. So he says, listen, most of the struggles that you think are just physical issues are really not physical at all. They may seem physical, but there is a spiritual root to most of the issues that you deal with. And so he just reminds you, don't always think physical because that's our tendency. When something's wrong with our body, we think, all right, physically we got to get this fixed. When something's wrong with a relationship, we physically try to fix it. We physically, and in the flesh, we try to work it out. And Paul says, I want you to think bigger and broader. You're actually not physical beings that have been given a spirit. You're actually spirit beings that have been given a temporary physical body. A matter of fact, everything that you currently see that is physical will go away. It's all going to go away. The earth as we know it will go away. God will make it new. Your body as you know it will go away. God's going to make it new. The only thing that is eternal is the things that are in the spiritual, the things that you can't see. So Paul says, I want you to think more spiritual than you do physical. And the same is true with deliverance. Deliverance is not just helping people physically feel better. It's not helping people get rid of some things that they're feeling. It is dealing with the spirit that is behind that physical thing or that feeling that they're experiencing. So deliverance is getting someone free who's being oppressed by something spiritual. I hope that makes sense. It's really simple. It's a simple process. All right, number two fact about deliverance. Deliverance ministry was exercised regularly in the ministry of Jesus. Okay, this was something that he did almost everywhere he went. Mark chapter 1, verse 27, it says the people were so amazed and they asked each other, what is this? A new teaching with new authority. He gives orders to impure spirits and these spirits obey him. Jesus did this a lot. It's really common. Matter of fact, it's really common in most parts of the world. We don't see a lot in America. I think, I think the, the concept of deliverance bothers us a little bit. It shouldn't. But in other places that I've gone, they have no problem talking about the evil spirits. In India, in Africa, in places. I've, I've, I've been in India before, and it's very common for at church someone to come up and say, I have a demon. I need help. And well, okay, well, thank you for just calling it for what it is. And we'll help that individual, okay? Now, one of the things that we struggle with is admitting that we struggle with things of the demonic from time to time, that there are actually spirits that are opposing us. And again, our number one go-to is to make something physical of something that is actually spiritual. And a lot of the evil demonic things that we deal with we give them physical names and we will call them things like this is my anxiety, this is my depression, this is a disorder, this is an addiction when actually at the root of it is something spiritual that God wants you to deal with. Sometimes in America, and I'm not anti-medicine, but sometimes in America we do a better job of sedating our demons with medicine than we do ridding ourselves of demons with prayer in the Word of God. So just know that this ministry of deliverance was something that Jesus did daily. Almost daily, Jesus did this. Which leads us to fact number three about deliverance. Just want you to see that this is in your Bible. The deliverance ministry is part of Jesus' assignment to me and you. It's part of our assignment. Obviously, part of our assignment is spreading the good news. It's healing. We talked about that last week. It's prophecy. He told us that we would declare his words. He told us that we would lay hands on the sick. He also said, you will cast out demons from people's lives. Look at this. This is exciting. Mark chapter 16, verse 15. He says, he told them, 
his disciples, go into the world and preach the good news to everyone. And anyone who believes will be baptized and saved. But anyone who refuses to believe will be condemned. And he says, these signs will accompany those who believe. They will cast out demons in my name. They'll cast out demons in my name. My believers, my followers, those who take up the torch from me, they will cast out demons in my name. That's what he said. So Jesus says, just as normal as leading people to Jesus should be for you in your church, just as normal as healing people should be for you in your church, so should casting out spirits from people's lives, spirits that are tormenting them. It's grace, it's mercy, it's love. And I'm telling you, if it's avoided, if you're not doing this as a follower of Jesus, and especially as a church, you're not loving people the way that Jesus says we should love people. It is not love to allow someone to be tormented when we have the power, the authority to help them. Okay? All right, so let's talk about what does this process look like? What is the process of helping someone get free of demonic oppression, a spirit coming up against them? What does that look like? Well, we have a process in our church called Be Free. It's like a 13-week Bible study, which really, a lot of you have been through freedom and you didn't even know it was a deliverance process. Because if we would have called it a deliverance process, you wouldn't have gone through it. So we call it freedom. But it is a process of going through and experiencing freedom. Now that's kind of a long process, but that's exactly what it is. But, but you can also administer and see this type of deliverance, not in just 13 weeks, but you can see it in a second. You can see it in a minute. I have seen personally God administer deliverance in just prayer moments after services. God has used me in a counseling sessions before to administer deliverance. There are many different ways, and it's really all the same process. It's a process of identifying what's going on, speaking to the issue, just like healing. Identifying what's going on, speaking to the issue, helping the individual see what caused it, and then rebuking the enemy. That's all it is. It's just a simple process. So I want you to take some notes. I want to show you this process. It's really quick, and I think it'll come in handy. Next time somebody comes to you and says, I'm feeling really heavy, or I'm feeling really depressed, or I feel really anxious, or I just don't feel right, instead of saying, have you taken any medicine, or can I help you with this? No, no say, hey, maybe, just maybe, there's something spiritual going on, and I know how to help you with it. Wouldn't you like to help somebody that's going through that? Maybe you can administer some self-deliverance today. Maybe some of you are feeling weight. You're feeling heavy. You're feeling depressed. You're feeling anxious. Just know that there's probably a spiritual side of this that needs to be dealt with. Okay? All right. So what does it look like to receive self-deliverance, but also to help others experience freedom from oppressive spirits? Here they are. I want you to write these down. Number one, ask the person or ask yourself, if you want to be free, do you really want to be free? As odd as it sounds, I have known some people that actually like their evil spirit. They like being anxious. They like being depressed. They like being bothered. I know that sounds weird, but some people actually like and enjoy being in that state. They like people feeling sorry for them. They like the attention. So you really have to ask yourself or ask the individual, do you want to be free? Do you want to experience freedom from this? This is actually something that we see in Scripture. Jesus did this. In John chapter 5, Jesus said to a person that was laying on the ground, he said to this person that had been in this condition for a long time, he asked them, do you want to get well? Do you want to get well? And I think that that's a, that's a question that you need to ask yourself and that you need to ask the individual because getting well doesn't just mean snap your well. It begins with a process, but it's going to take effort on your part to stay well. Matter of fact, there's actually a warning in Scripture that we find in Matthew chapter 12. 
And what Jesus is talking about, he says, listen, you need to make sure that the person who wants to be free really wants to be free. And you need to make sure that you really want to be free because if you send a demon out and you really don't want to be free, the condition can actually get worse. Read this scripture with me. And I think you'll see what he's talking about. He says, when a demon is cast out of a person, it roams around in a dry region, looking for a pla another place to go, another place to torment, another person, but it doesn't find it. So then it says, I'll return to the house I moved out of. I'll come back to that person that I was tormenting. So it goes back only to find the house is vacant, warm, and ready to move back into. So the demon goes looking for seven other friends, other demons, more evil than itself, and they all enter together to live there. And then this person that was set free is actually now in a much worse condition than the beginning. This describes what will happen to people of this evil generation. And so listen, this is what he's describing. He's describing a person that's being oppressed and says, okay, I want to be free. Somebody administers prayer. Maybe they get prayer from someone else. They do get free, but then they don't seek the Lord. They don't follow Jesus. They don't press into their healing. And maybe they go back into the same routines. Maybe they go back into uh, sin. And sin is a way that we actually invite the demonic into our life. If, if you were wondering, you know, how does a person get oppressed? You know, why does that come upon us? Usually it's due to either allowing the demon or inviting the demon. And sometimes a, a spirit will come up against us. And if we, don't, if we don't rebuke them, if we allow them to torment, the situation gets worse. In the same way, through sin, we often invite demonic spirits to oppress us. This is why scripture speaks about sin, and says, hey, don't do that because you're hurting yourself. You're harming yourself. When you willingly sin, when you seek out things to look at, look at that you shouldn't, when you seek to listen to things that you shouldn't, when you watch things that you shouldn't, when you speak in ways that you should, shouldn't, you're actually inviting evil spirits to come and live, to torment and to oppress. And so what Jesus says is, okay, make sure that the person wants to be free. Make sure that you want to be free because after the house is swept clean, you now have a responsibility to fill the house. And we'll talk about that, okay? So ask the recipient, do you want to be free? Do you want to be free? And if they say yes, okay, the next thing you do, number two, bind the spirit. Bind the spirit. Matthew chapter 12 says, if but if it is by the Spirit of God, this is Jesus talking, that I drive out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. Or again, how can anyone enter a strong man's house? All right, so how can I enter in, in the spiritual, into this individual's life with an evil spirit there and not bind the strong man? Okay, so I first must bind the strong man so that I can now plunder. And so what he's saying here is if I'm going to come in through the spiritual, I know this sounds weird, but just track with me. If I'm going to help an individual and come into the situation and get this spirit out, I have to bind the spirit, remove it before we can start fixing the house up again. Again, he gives this illustration of a house and that's what's going on. The owner of the house the person is an evil spirit. I've got to kick him out first, and then we can start doing some work, okay? So again, step one, do you want to be free? Yes, all right, step two, I'm going to pray. I'm going to use my authority. So in the name of Jesus, I bind any spirit that's not of God. I bind you spirit of depression. I bind you spirit of anxiety. I bind you spirit of addiction. I bind you spirit of perversity and pornography. I bind you in the name of Jesus and I command you to leave. Okay, all right, so, so once I ask the person and then I use my authority and bind the spirit, number three, I now make sure, I make sure that the person has accepted Jesus. And, and I just ask a simple question. Hey, are you a Christian? Are you a Christian? Yeah, I said a prayer. No, no, that's not what I meant. Are you a Christian? Are you a follower of Jesus? Have you surrendered your life to him? Are you following after him in every way that you possibly can? Well, I said a prayer a long time ago, but I've, I've strayed from the Lord. All right, well, if there's any question, let's devote ourselves to the Lord right now. Let's give our lives to the Lord, okay? And so I make sure 
that the person has accepted Jesus. Jesus actually said this is the most important part. Okay, he said in Luke chapter 10, verse 20, don't rejoice because evil spirits obey you or evil spirits have moved out of this person's life. Rejoice because your names are registered in heaven. So make sure above deliverance, above healing, above any of these other things that we're talking about, make sure the person knows Jesus. And again, if there's any question, you just lead them to Jesus in that moment. All right, then number four, I want you to write these down. This is super practical. Ask the person when or what led to this bondage? Like, when did this happen? When did you start feeling this way? What do you think happened in your life that may have resulted this? Now, the reason that this is a big deal is because we want to, if possible, we want to find what spirits are bothering this individual and oppressing this individual. So I ask questions like, uh, hey, when did you start feeling this way? Matter of fact, this is biblical too. I'm just showing you things that Jesus did. Mark chapter 9, verse 21, Jesus when about to administer deliverance to a boy, he said, how long has this been happening? Jesus asked the boy's father, and the boy's father said, since he was a little boy. Since he was a little boy. He's been like this for a long time. All right, so Jesus was trying to figure out how long he had been dealing with this and what might have happened that led to it. And so I ask questions like that. Hey, when did you start feeling this way? When did you start feeling heavy? When did you start feeling depressed? Was there something that happened in that season that was traumatic, that was hard for you to digest, that was that was, you know, that that may have led to this? And almost every time people say it started about 6 months ago, it started a year ago, it started 5 years ago. What happened? Well, I went through a divorce then. That was the year I went through a divorce and I started feeling anxiety every night. That was the year that I got fired and I started dealing with anger. I just go off the hook all the time. That was, that was the year that, that, um, that my son was diagnosed with cancer and I just started feeling depressed, okay? So that is really, really good information to have because now you know what you're dealing with and you know when it happened. So the next thing that you do is lead the person to begin to close doors. So let's close some doors of partnership, okay? Because like we said earlier, the only reason that these demons have a right is because we either invited them in or allowed them to. Now, I know this may sound hard. This is going to be hard to receive, but sometimes we actually invite demons into our lives by partnering with their lives by partnering what they're broadcasting, by agreeing with what they're saying. And so one of the keys to deliverance is actually confessing this partnership. And so I tell people, I say, hey, when your husband left you and you started feeling heavy and rejected, did you ever at any point believe that you deserved to be left? Did you ever believe that it was your fault? Did you ever partner with that spirit that was telling you lies? Yes, I did. Did you ever partner with the spirit of anger by lashing out at people? Yes, I did. Did you ever partner with the spirit of anxiety and believe the lies that things were worse than they actually were? Did you partner with the spirit of fear by believing that your world was falling apart and that God had let you? Yeah, I felt that many times. Okay, let's do this. Let's, let's confess that partnership to God. Tell him that you did that. Why would we do that? Well, 1 John 9 says, if we confess our sins, if we confess our partnerships with these spirits, he is faithful and just and will forgive us of our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. So I tell people, hey, just tell the Lord, God, I am so sorry. I didn't believe you. I didn't partner with you in that season. And because I partnered with my enemy, I've been dealing with some stuff. So God, please forgive me. Confess that you did it and then ask him to forgive you. And he will every single time. Matthew 6, 14 says, if, if you forgive other, uh, their trespasses, your heavenly father will also forgive you. So ask for forgiveness and he will do it. The next thing you do, again, write this down, is resist the enemy now. This is the fun part. Resist the enemy and break some curses. The ground is set. Confession has taken place. We've identified what's going on in the situation. So confess 
your sins, ask for forgiveness, and then lead the person into a moment where you deal with the enemy. Again, this is the fun part. James 4, 7 says, submit yourselves, therefore God, therefore to God. That's what you've been doing, confessing and repenting. So I've submitted myself before God. Now resist the devil and he will flee. Okay, so cast out the unclean spirits. Tell them to leave in the name of Jesus. Now I always tell the person, I said, I want you to tell the spirits to leave. I want you to tell that spirit of anxiety to leave. I want you to tell that spirit of fear to leave. I want you to tell that spirit of heaviness that he's trespassing and he has to leave. So I'll get to tell him, say, in the name of Jesus, repeat after me, in the name of Jesus, spirit of fear, I command you to leave and not return. Do not return. Whatever the spirit might be, and you don't have to have the clinical name for it. You don't have to have the biblical name for it. Whatever they're feeling, just call it by that. Call it spirit of depression. I have to command you to leave in the name of Jesus. And then after I do that, I'll ask the person, hey, how do you feel? How do you feel? And a lot of the time they'll say, oh my goodness, I can breathe. Oh my goodness, I have peace. Oh my goodness, I don't feel anxiety. And they'll tell you immediately, I feel weight lifted off of me. And I tell them right then, I say, okay, just praise the Lord. Tell him thank you. Tell him thank you. Some people say, I feel a little better. And they say, I only feel a little better. I'll pray with them again. Hey, let's go back. Let's check. Let's see if there's anything we missed. Because I don't want to leave you in this condition, okay? And so we'll pray again. But ask them how they feel. And if they feel peace, then move to this last step. And this is the fun part. Ask the Holy Spirit to fill all of the empty places. All of those empty places, all of those empty spaces. So what we do now is exactly what Jesus told us to do. We have cleansed the house and now we ask Holy Spirit to come now. The Holy Spirit, not the evil spirit. Holy Spirit, the person of God to come and to fill the individual. And so I just simply, I pray with them and I'll say, God, we pray that by your spirit, you come now and you fill this person up. Fill them with love. Fill them with joy. Fill them with peace. Fill them with confidence, God. And continue to fill them as they press hard after you. And just say that prayer and Holy Spirit will come and he'll do a wonderful work. Now, the job's not done at that point. You know, we want to check in on the individual. We want to make sure that they're continuing to fill themselves up, that they're not going back after those things. But man, I can't tell you of a greater feeling knowing that God has just used you very simply, not in a weird way at all, to help someone who was being oppressed. Jesus loved doing this. He loved seeing peace and joy come over people's faces who had been oppressed by the enemy. He was destroying the works of darkness. And I can tell you firsthand, there is not a greater feeling in the world knowing that God just used you to set somebody free, to help them sleep at night, to help them not be tormented by the enemy. Anybody, if you're a follower of Jesus, you can do this. And I'm telling you, this is what the unveiled church will look like. It won't be a church that helps people find meds. It won't be a church that just ignores some of their psychological and emotional conditions. It will be a church that looks in the spiritual. Now, will we ignore doctors? No. Will we help people by other means? Absolutely. But it's not our job to do that. It's our job to be spiritual specialists to help people in the spiritual. And I'm telling you, listen, the effects of COVID-19 have not been felt or experienced yet. Everybody's thinking in the physical. How can we take care of this in the physical? How can we get a vaccine? How can we help people not be exposed? How can we create environments where people are, are safe? And listen, we need people thinking about the physical effects of COVID-19. But I'm telling you, there are currently people in environments that they should not be in. There's children in environments that they should not be in. There are people currently being tormented in the spiritual by the devil. And it's going to be the responsibility of the church to help these oppressed people get free. We need to be ready to help people on the other side of this. 
There's not enough counselors. There's not enough pastors. There's not enough church staff in the world to help the people that are being tormented right now. We need you. We need you to step up into your God-given assignment, which is to help people get free. Can I hear a good amen? All right. I want you to bow your heads. I'm going to pray for you today before we leave. And again, this is something that you can administer in your groups today. I've given you the steps. God's Spirit is with you. And I really encourage you, if there's anybody in your home, if, if you're, you yourself are going through something right now, let's administer deliverance today with each other. Just ask the question, is anybody feeling oppressed? Is anybody feeling heavy? Is anybody feeling like the devil is after them? And if so, you go through these steps. You lay on hands and you pray for them. And in the future, if you need help or someone needs help, you know how to respond. You know how to respond. So let me just bless you today as we exit. Father, we thank you for this time together. God, we again just thank you for your word. Thank you for making it something um, that's often misunderstood like deliverance. Thank you for making it so clear and so practical. It's so easy. It's so easy to just simply do what Jesus did. So give us the courage and give us the boldness, God, to help people get free. God, I pray right now, if anyone is watching right now and they would say, I don't know Jesus, the first step to freedom is salvation. So for those who don't know Jesus and you're ready to take that step today, will you just pray this prayer with me? Say, Jesus, thank you so much for dying on a cross for my sins. I now give you my life. Please forgive me of my sins and come fill my heart. I'm ready to follow you. God, we pray that you fill these individuals with your spirit, set them free, and set them on a path of sanctification and growing in Jesus Christ. God, again, we thank you for your word today. Send us out this week to be your hands and feet. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. If you made any type of decision today, we want to celebrate and partner with you. Your online host has just posted a link in the comment section of whatever platform you're joining us from. We would love for you to fill this out so that we can connect with you and send you some resources. We believe in the power of prayer here at TGP. If you have anything that you would like prayer for today, please just comment your request and one of our online hosts is ready to partner with you in prayer. We believe that giving is a form of worship. If you don't call TGP home, please don't feel any obligation whatsoever to give. But for those of you who do call TGP home, this is your opportunity to continue to support your local church and our mission efforts that are happening right now through your tithes and offerings. There's never been a better opportunity for the church to show the love of Christ through our generosity. On your screen right now are all the different types of ways that you can give. As we wrap up for today, we wanna to let you know that church doesn't have to stop here. We've provided the discussion guide for your household to keep the conversation going. It has some scripture for you to read together, some questions, and some suggested prayers. Your online host has just posted the link in the comment section of whatever platform you're joining us on. Well, that's it for today's online experience. We're so honored that you chose to tune in and worship with us. We're praying blessings over you and your family, and we hope that you have a fantastic day.